And we're back with some more oxygen not included on, well, mini base, mini baby base. Uh, what were we doing today? Yes, we are moving our toilets down here so that we have, uh, we're, we're taking them out of this location. We're going to free up the entire top of the base because that is about to become our giant liquid storage tank. This giant liquid storage tank is going to go across the top because I've decided, yeah, we can't have this down here. It is just messing things up. So time for a little bit of removal. Oh, at the same time that's going on, we're doing some minor changes here to the uh, Glossy Draco enclosure. We're switching them over to Bristle Blossoms and we've removed the mealwood. Namely because we're running out of dirt and you can feed these on, where is it? Yeah, mealwood or Bristle Blossoms. It's just the mealwood will keep upping their chances of producing more and more Glossy Dracos. So from now on, once once the new breed comes in, the Glossy Dracos only drop 60% Glossy Draco eggs and 40% uh, regular Dreclet eggs. It just means we'll get less plastic and more reed fiber. Not the end of the world. Anyway, let's uh, let's get this this removal completed. Oh, wonderful. I forgot there's going to be bottles of water in here. I wonder how much germs are in that water there. Uh, no surface germs? No, wait, liquid pipe. Water. Ah, 180,000 germs. That seems more like it. 19,229. That's not a lot. Mm. We're not doing too badly there. Okay, so we may need to... Uh, yeah, filtered that water somehow, so I think we're going to throw it back into our little decontamination system over here. After I put some more chlorine back in here, I, I should have realized there was going to be more dirty water to deal with. With those little bottles of water decontaminated for us, you know what, let's uh, maybe turn those off for now. I don't want any more water getting thrown in there by surprise. I've also maybe gone and harvested some more regular... Th we, we were down to less than... like We had about 180 tons. We, we needed some more. Those uh, these shovels that were breeding... Dear Lord, it, they, they consume just so much of that stuff. Oh! Uh, seems like there's a bit of a meteor shower. Let's just, uh, cancel that. Yeah, let's, uh... Hey, go on. Everyone, everyone back inside. All of you, what, what are you doing? No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Just run that way. You also get home. <laughs> and once they're on their way back in... Yeah, are they going? Yes, they're quick, quick, quick. Get it? That's perfect, perfect. Now everyone's safe. We'll just go lock the door. Perfect, perfect. Uh, let me uh, let me clear out some more of this. We're going to fill liquid storage tanks across the top here and we're going to chlorinate them so that we can decontaminate everything without having to go through all of this mess again and not have to worry about germs getting inside our base again. As it is, those uh, the, uh, the electrolyzers are spitting out a lot of food poisoning germs in the surrounding area. It's not the end of the world. It's not causing us any problems. It's just with the problems we've had so far, I'd like to play this a little bit safer. This is what it's going to look like. An awful, awful, awful lot of liquid reservoirs. I did some math in the background. I know, cheating. Uh, using a calculator, I figured out I need about, uh, what was it? Uh, 32 tonnes of water. Well, assuming I keep about 12 dupes. Uh, I might go up to 12. I might stay at 10. We'll, we'll see. But assuming I kept 12 dupes, I need about 32 tonnes of water, plus another about 2 tonnes for feeding the bristle blossoms. So about 34 tonnes of water storage. That's a little bit more than that. 55 tonnes is a little bit of overkill, but it's nice to have some overhead with these things. Plus, it fits nice and neatly here across the top. Then all we have to do is... Oh, wait. Can't have any of those there. Uh, we're going to have to do a few minor modifications here. I just want to fill this room with chlorine and a ton of water. Well, 55 tons of it. So then we're going to have to feed these forward. We're going to have to basically daisy chain these through each other so that all the germs die off before they get to the end. Of course, while we're doing this, the the gas is getting a little... Yeah, it's getting a little bit of hydrogenated up there. Uh, let's... Uh, yeah, let's, we're going to put in a little liquid lock here and we're hopefully going to be able to seal this off and then... Uh, do a little bit of minor modifications. We're going to vacuum this whole area out. And then we're going to put in just a smidge of chlorine. A tiny smidge. All right, we've got our little miniature liquid lock. This is going to be not the most stable. If they exhale passing through it, they might damage it. But that does allow us to at least seal this up and hopefully vacuum it out. In fact, we may want to filter all of the gases we're going to suck out of here. And if we do that, we should be able to get all that hydrogen and stick it into our hydrogen tank. Oh, we don't want to move that hydrogen tank. Damn it, there's always more stuff to do. All right, we'll vacuum this place out. It shouldn't be that bad. I, uh, I connected it up to our old filtration system so all of our hydrogen can get stored up nice and neatly. Ooh, you know what? All of that hydrogen is immediately going to get burnt off. Uh, you know what? I don't even mind that much. We'll, we'll let it burn off. I can move it around later. That was actually a waste of time. Mm, never mind. Uh, well, uh, we're going to fill this up and then we're going to start putting clean water in here. What I mean is we're going to filter this water. The moment we get it, we're going to filter it and then immediately dump it into these clean water tanks and then we're going to let all the germs get annihilated and feed that clean water into our system. 
I was going to keep the polluted water around, but I haven't been able to think of a use for the polluted water. We might use it for pinch of pepper nuts, but I haven't found a thought of a use for the pinch of pepper nuts yet. So instead, we're just going full clean water. I'm sure I will not regret this later. So we're finally ready to dump in a little bit of chlorine. I would like to be able to reclaim that last set of tiles though, so we'll just let in a dash of chlorine to start. Uh, I'm going to let in three packets. I'm going to be really generous here. Actually, four. Four whole packets are going to go in. How much does that leave us with? 11, 11 kilos? You know what? That is fine. That is fine. We've took, taken a big chunk of our, of our uh, chlorine. We'll dump it in there. Then uh, we'll deconstruct that if we can. Deconstruct that daily. I'm not even sure. But that means we now have to start putting in the water. Uh, so water shall go in from this end. And this water feeds off our, our primary water source for now. So we're going to filter all the polluted water down here. It turns into clean water and gets distributed throughout our base. Any excess water that we're not using gets dumped in here. And it goes straight into this tank where hey, once once we stop adding in fresh water, the germs will stop going up. Hell, we're, we're already killing them off. They're getting diluted down enough and the chlorine is murdering everything that goes in there. Once that first tank is full, you'll notice that there's uh, the pipes, the liquid pipes are already built here. So what should happen is, yeah, you can see the little blobs for the, where the pipes are. So once those pipes are full, we'll connect it up to the second tank, let that tank fill, and then the third, and then after that we should be able to just let it roam free. Now the reason I'm not hooking it up now is that one blob of water right there, that's full of germs. Even though that pipe is submerged in chlorine, it, it doesn't make a difference. The chlorine only kills it while it's in the tank, so this is normally how germs sneak in. So we're going to slowly fill three or four tanks, then we're going to let the whole thing flow free. Uh, while that was also going on, we, we vacuumed at the top of the map as well. You'll notice we got all the regolith. Soon, soon we'll have more of these shovels. How many are we up to right now? We need 20 to be self-sustained. We're going to get eight? Wow. Oh, yeah. What, what are you doing over there? Are you getting groomed? When are you dropping an egg next? Hurry up. Hurry up. This is taking forever. Oh, wait. Yes, I put in a critter drop off and removed the auto shipping. <laughs> that might be why this has been taking so long. Never mind. There, there, there's actually eggs in here. I just haven't been paying attention. All right. We'll get those out of there and then... Yeah, then we got to move all of this out of the way so we can put in our rocketry system. Well, we did have to go back in here a little bit just so we could get rid of that uh, gas vent. But I think maybe we can... Yeah, I think we can brick this up from the outside. It won't be pretty, but I think it can be done. We can mop this up and then slowly brick this in diagonally a little bit at a time. This turned out not to be that bad to brick in. Uh, there we go. Done. Now we have that system fully set up, and okay, the germs haven't gone down, but once we've got a few tanks filled, this will be a completely hands-off system. Though I might want to move this closer to up here, maybe do a, a little bit of rejigging of the plumbing. We just want everything out of the way of this area, so I'm going to have to even move all the Atmosuit docks. Ugh, and uh, that's why I'm trying to collect as much regolith as possible now. And as much clay. How much clay do we have? 27 tons. However, I don't think we have enough coal to make turn that all into ceramic. The reason we're going to want the ceramic is so that we can handle steam and high temperature items a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, 25 kilos of coal and 100, tons of, 100 kilos of clay give us 100 kilos of ceramic. So we need a quarter as much clay as we have clay, or a quarter as much coal as we have clay. And that, yeah, we do. We can definitely do that. Hmm. Nope. Oh. Excellent. That's out of the sleeping area. Quick, close the doors. Close the doors. Don't let back in. Oh. Yeah, that was interfering with my dupe sleep. Yeah, well, with all of that done... I think we we can finally call decontamination complete. That took way too long, and I'm not going to mess around with germs ever again. I'm going to be much more careful in the future, probably, maybe. Uh, now we have to uh, reinstall some gas pumps so that we can make sure all of that hydrogen cloud stops collecting up there. Hydrogen management is finished. We just got a gas element sensor up here if it detects hydrogen for more than 25 seconds. Just a little bit of a delay gate on it. It will activate that gas pump. And that gas pump just starts pumping all that hydrogen out of there. Same thing up here. I'll probably fill all of this area with something later on while I'm at it also. Now, uh, yeah, this liquid tank has finally filled all the way to the brim. And the last of the germs are dying off. However, and this is the, this is the bit that gets you. If we say grab this pipe here and hook it up, that first packet of water that goes into this tank is going to be absolutely riddled with germs. Let's have a quick look at it here. First one. Nope. Nope. Ah, there we are. So there's still loads of germs. Namely because the new ones coming in as well are also germing up the tank. We need to get three tanks of water in a row doing this, and that way no germs will ever make it through to the fourth. So we'll let that finish up. But uh, to speed this along, I think I'm going to add in a little, just a little bit more filtration. I want to do 10 kilos a second as opposed to whatever is the leftovers. Second string of liquid tanks is full. Now we're just going to add on the third tank. And now there should be an awful lot less germs going through at this point. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we're going to see a little bit of germs, but quite a small amount. It shouldn't go up too high. The reason being, the germs in here, okay, they're pretty high. They're about, what, 400,000? <laughs> but once it gets into the second tank, which we can eventually find, it drops down to a much lesser degree. And then by the time it hits the third tank, they're going to be even less. And it's going to cause the dilution effect. So by the time we hit the third tank, the chlorine combined with the dilution of germs will mean we should end up with nothing happening. And we should just be able to let it fill the whole way along. At which point we'll just have giant tanks of clean water ready to go. Uh, at the same time, we're draining all the water out of here, so we're about to run out of fish. Uh, there's going to be no liquid tank for the fish. This will be our entire water storage supply. This is going to get, you know, cut down into a tiny corner. And we're still not using infinite liquid storage. I know there's a lot of suggestions to use infinite liquid storage in the comms, and it's just... No, 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 I, I don't want to. It's... It, mm, wait, no. It, it just makes this game more difficult and you have to I have to think about it more and really plan out and plot how I'm going to use everything before I do anything. And it, I kind of like that. It adds a little bit to the difficulty and I kind of enjoy that bit. It's more fun. Uh, how are we looking down here? Oh, we've actually managed to scrape out some of the magma. We're slowly but surely dumping all the magma in there. Let's, uh, let's maybe put this as a sweep only for the moment. I would like to sort of wall this in. So that we're only pulling magma from this side and then sort of scoop this magma out of here and dump it in onto this side. Just a sort of a quick way to um, mm, free this all up so we can get all that debris out of there. I want to harvest all that debris for, well, for some uses that we can might have for it. Like that diamond could be very handy. Also the tungsten, anything down there. And why did that door close again? Oh, you know what? Uh, temperature is above 170. Damn it. If it's above zero degrees, the door will open. Yes, perfect. That's going to stay open for a while now. It will mess with our power, but this will only be two seconds. Now, I didn't do this before because I was worried the blob of magma might pop up and destroy our ladder system, but I think we've got a tile of space to work with. This might be... Ooh. Yeah. We're, well, we're not going up another tile. We're, th this is a slow process, but we'll manage. Now we'll just set this back to normal. Uh, oh, actually, wait. Let's get some magma out of here first. You know what? I think we might be able to just squeeze that magma out of the way. Okay, we might lose the ladder segment, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. All right, all right, that's... That's perfect. Oh, right, yeah, so... Now we have a side we can dump magma on, and a side we can store magma on. Uh, the... Though I probably need to... Mm, mm, let me think for a second. Thankfully, when you replace ladder segments with tiles, they just... The debris pops on top. And now I'm probably going to have to deconstruct some things here. We need to put in a a pitcher pump over here and start scooping that out. Though I think I think we can wait a while. We'll wait until this pitcher pump has drained some of this out here. We can put this all back to normal, I think. Yeah, I didn't leave myself a lot of space here. If I had been planning ahead, I would have left room for a pitcher pump this side, maybe. Ah, uh, oil reservoir gets in the way, but I yeah, I do want access to the oil reservoir as well. But no, no, no. We gotta focus on oh, space and getting our water filtration done. If we have done this right, and all the numbers hold up, all the water that comes through this tank should be completely germ free. Come on. Germ-free water. There we go. So this one here, riddled with germs. This one here, slightly less riddled. This one here, tiny bit of germs. Final one, no germs. Perfect. I'll just make sure that tank is full. Once all four of those are full, we'll connect up the rest and we'll just convert as much of this polluted water into clean water as we can. I want to see what a presence uh, the game has in store for us. Ooh, rust. That is more chlorine. Yes, we will take that. We can always find use for more chlorine, Chlorine, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, time to scooch all of this here. This needs to all go pack fast this line. All of it. To free up more space, I need to, well, free up more space here. So what I'm going to do is drop our entire storage chunk down here. There's a lot there. That's pretty much everything we have that was dumped on one tile. So I'm just curious. Oh, no, did not crash the game. Didn't even cause it to chug. I'm, I'm actually mildly surprised at that. Uh, that will move all of our infinite storage section down here. And now we're going to rip out, well, a chunk of this and start moving these buildings over here. I need to get the hydrogen generators and a bunch of other junk out of the way over here so that we can put in a rocket silo. I think we might be able to leave in the regular... Well, no, we're going to have to move all the shovels out of there as well eventually. Though, how are we doing? Please tell me we've got enough. Please. Nope, 13. We need seven more shovels. But, but, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, let me, uh, let's see some more movement over here. I really feel like you just have to, like, you, you're, you're just finding somewhere to cram anything. Just, just to tide you over for a little bit. So we're going to move all the hydrogen generators over there. We had to do a whole bunch of repiping and rejigging just to make sure everything ended up where it needed to go. There we go. We'll, now all the hydrogen will come down here, get filtered there, and dumped into that section. Right. That's, uh, that's fine. That is 
just dandy. And then we can get rid of all of this junk back here. And soon we can remove those hydrogen generators and free up that space. I even ripped out a coal generator and you know what? We can rip out some of those as well. Now I just need to find a way to get rid of all this water. And no, I'm not dumping it into the magma. It's tempting, but no. No, no. <laughs> Already done that once before. Ooh, three more hatchling eggs. We will just sweep those up. I have no idea how many hatches we have, but they're all dumped over here. There is a lot of hatches. Every time hatches show up in there, I just dump them over that side. We got... Yeah, there's just a lot of critters. I have no idea how many. Actually, let's find out. 62. 62 critters. H how are they not idle, happy, hungry? Yeah, okay, they're not overcrowded. I'm kind of surprised we've got that much space to work with. Uh, let me uh, let me rip out some more of this. Yes, I made a minor mistake again. I uh, maybe have gotten someone entombed. Come on. Hey, guys, guys, what are you doing? Let's, okay, we're going emergency. Just, just dig them out. I swear, I got them to a guy, all right? I, they were walking this way, and they stopped to chat with someone. Which, who does that? It's the middle of a meteor shower. Just just keep running. That's, ugh. Okay, all done. Now, the main problem we're having right now is emptying out this water down here. We have filled all of these water tanks. They're all delicious, clean water, all germ-free. However, we still have this enormous amount of water down here I have to dispose of. I think we're just going to have to pump it into space. I was going to start converting it all into clay, but... Hmm... The problem is we're ripping this all out to put in a rocketry system. We might have to... Oh, God. I'm probably going to have to move this, aren't I? If I move this, we'll have space to put a similar setup to that over here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to definitely have to do a big fast forward here, aren't I? Oh, damn it. It turns out my puffs are starting to have a little bit of a disco. Yeah, that's the noise you hear inside every nightclub bathroom. Uh, I'll just uh, a quick restart and they'll stop doing that, hopefully. So, some minor renovations on several fronts. Uh, this ranch over here we had for ranching our two plastic dracos, or glossy dracos. This has now been moved over here. It's uh, exactly 24,000 size to fit the two of them. The two dracos in there get groomed. Over here we've got our shearing section, so all of the eggs that drop in here, they all get whisked away by this auto sweeper and dumped into our shearing section. This way we can demolish all of this old stuff and free up the space here so we can use this to, well, access space. Uh, at the same time, this required me to chop down on the bedrooms, which are now... Wait, how do people get into those bedrooms? Wait, can people get into those bedrooms? Hmm, one... Oh yes, yes, they can. They can get it through here. Excellent, I didn't mess it up that badly. So at the same time, I need more space down here, so I move the hydrogen tank again from somewhere over here to over here. Uh, that has freed up the this area here for more hydrogen. So the hydrogen generators have moved from that level down to here. Now I just got to get the electrolyzer and the gas pump out of there and we can move our bedrooms down far enough. Then we can put in some atmosuit docks up here so we can sort of move this section over here. I think, yeah, this game is starting to fry my brain. It really is so hard working in a space this tiny. But no, no. We will move the bedrooms down here, and we will put in an atmosuit duct section here. The, yeah, the, the shovels can stay here for now. And we have actually hit capacity on those. Are we up to 22? 20? Yeah, we got 22, I think, yep. Yeah. So I think, I think we'll just leave it at that. We will cut off the supply of more. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll wait until we get 25, just to be on the super, super safe side, and then I'll, uh, we'll cull that area over there. So let's move some bedrooms, shall we? Before we move on, actually, the, the bedrooms are in and all that, I just want to have a quick go over shovel starvation ranching because this question these questions come up all the time. Uh, one of them is, well, how exactly does it work? Let's grab a va baby vole pup here. They've got an age of two. They've got 42,000 calories. They basically start with X amount of calories in them already, and they consume those calories at a set rate. However, when they're young and they're not even groomed yet, their metabolism is really slow, so they only consume a tiny amount of calories, 480 per cycle. Then as they get older, let's say this one here is nine years of age, we have been grooming it since it hit eight, or so, since it hit five. So once you start grooming them, their reproduction rate goes up to 17%, from two to 17%. However, at the same time, their calorie consumption goes through the roof. They're now consuming 4,800 calories. So they're consuming way more of their starting calories. However, they will, like for example, this one here is at 48%. Let's find a different one here. Ah, this one. So this one is 10 years of age, it has 80% reproduction, and in about a cycle and a bit, it's going to drop an egg. And it has enough calories to last for about three or four more, well, three more cycles, three, three cycles or so. So this will drop an egg before it runs out of the starting calories it was born with. 
And then once that happens and it runs out of its starting calories, it'll be somewhere around 42% production, uh, reproduction, and it will then run out of food and starve to death 10 cycles later. What this means is you get a shovel, it'll drop an egg, 20 cycles later that egg will hatch, five cycles after that the egg, the the vole pup will turn into an actual shovel, at which point you can start grooming it. And then in six cycles after that, it will, well, a little bit after six cycles, depending on how quick, quick your rancher gets around to it, they'll drop an egg. So about every 31 cycles, uh, a shovel will drop an egg, which means every 31 cycles, you get five kilos or five barbecues worth of meat. That means about 1.5, actually it's 1.55, every 1.55 shovels will support a duplicate, which makes them really efficient to farm and they don't require any space, so you can cram them into a tiny box like this and it all works out. I might even put in a little bit of automation to whisk the meat out. I haven't been doing that so far because, well, we didn't need to. But that is how starvation ranching works. Now, excuse me while I take what's basically this and copy-paste it over here, sort of. There we go. That actually looks not the worst. I, I even did a little bit of planning this time around. We are going to fill up these tanks with polluted water, then we're going to delete those liquid tanks, and that will dump us out a bunch of polluted oxygen in the area, which we can convert to get our hands on some more clay. Clay-wise, uh, how much have we got? Oh, we have 34 tons of ceramic, so we've converted a lot of clay into ceramic, which is great. Though we've eaten through our coal reserves. Anyway, this, all of this oxygen we're going to be dumping out here will pressurize this room, so I'm not even going to bother with a liquid lock here. Dupes are just going to wander right in and not care. Now the whole thing has got some auto sweepers up here. We're going to dump a whole bunch of regolith right there. It should be fine. It's effectively this, except just a little bit smarter, hopefully, but also slightly bigger. But it squeezes in quite nicely. Now, where were we? Uh, yeah, put one of these over there, shall we? And once that's it... Nope, oh, wrong way. Nope. Oh, there we go. And we'll put that over there. Oh, wait, that's made of iron. I don't want to make that of iron, do I? I'm going to make that sucker out of steel because, yes, I would be worried about that actually getting damaged. Uh, yeah, let's... How many suits do I have? I might need to make another suit. Mm, damn it. Oh, and blueprint-wise, we have a very interesting selection here. These two. Petroleum, which we don't have any of yet, but we can get that from an oil well. And obsidian, which... I think space is probably the only place we can get that. It's the only material we've got that can survive working with magma and things like that. So I think I kind of have to take it. The petroleum would be really, really useful and handy to have. Like a ton of that just showing up, but... Kind of have to take what I can't ever get my hands on again, potentially. All right, let's, uh, let's fill these up. I'm going to have to drain this entire liquid tank. Oh my god, that's going to take a while. I might double down and put in some more liquid pumps because it's just taking so long. But yeah, maybe double down on the uh, liquid storage and we can hopefully get that drained nice and quickly. Slowly but surely, the plan is coming together. Uh, down here where... Yeah, that seems to be working. I was worried that might call the pitcher pump to evaporate but no now we can dump some of this over here i did have to unfortunately delete the doors which means we've lost some steel down here but worst case scenario we can always dump it back in there again and they might actually pull the steel from there to replace the doors actually i might pull someone in here lock them in then they'll have to use that steel to replace the doors that might be the smarter plan but for the time being what we're going to do is move a lot of magma from this side to the other side uh you know what we can probably load it in from both sides if we get smart about this by just putting a pitcher pump empty on either side. While that is going on though, let's just have a quick look at our new setup here. This is... <laughs> um, the water was taking way too long for me to get up from there, so I stuck in a second liquid pump. Now the first liquid pump goes up and makes sure that all of these are topped up. The second one goes just directly over here and all of them dump into these liquid tanks. Liquid tanks I occasionally have to, you know, deconstruct, but that is all part of the plan. Now let's uh, let's open this up to space so we can start letting some of that vent and then we're going to build a way up there so we can start getting our hands on more regolith. Then at that point this can all go. Oh, are you finished? I think you've, yeah, you've already reproduced again so we can get rid of that. Barbecue wise, yeah, we are fully 100% barbecued now. We have nothing but barbecue and we could, we could probably trash the gristleberry and the pickled meal if we wanted to. But we won't. We've got infinite storage for our food and it's all in a perfectly fresh, sterile, chlorine environment. This is... yeah, I finally feel like I'm sort of getting a hang of this map. Almost. Anyway, I'll just uh, do a little bit of micromanagement here on the magma. Or maybe a lot of micromanagement on the magma. Turns out we could fit an awful lot of the magma from that side over here. I don't think I'll be able to fit it all. I was I was beginning to get, you know, optimistic there. We I placed a few extra uh, bottle emptiers around the place. We did manage to get quite a lot of the magma over this side, but not quite all of it. I could try risking it and maybe losing a ladder segment or two, but you know what? 
We got time. It's a small map. We're 240 cycles in. We've got time. Also, this uh, setup here. Wow, we have a lot of clay. That's that's 15.6 tons of clay. This makes clay at quite a ludicrous rate. You know what? I think we can fit in another one just over... Oh, run, run. We can fit in another one right there. Why not? We've got the regolith for it. What's our regolith up to? 448 tons. I love that we can just produce so much regolith. Uh, once those get to about... Ooh, 1300 kilos of pressure then I'll stop drawing magma from over here but I think once we break in here again and do this a second time we should hopefully be able to get that oil reservoir though we've got a problem how do we get rid of this very very bottom layer even when we've say uh, slurped out all of the magma that's there the packets of magma over here they will be too large to mop I've tried mopping magma before and it's just the way it it's too viscous. You can't get it into small enough packets to mop. Also, I wonder, like, the, the small packets of magma you can mop, I just wonder what kind of bristles they're using on those brushes. Maybe we could force it out. Mm, I don't know. I'll have to have a think about that. Uh, for the time being, though, yeah, that's all done. I think we can start, once we've moved all this regolith out of here, we can start in on space. I am going to try something a little sneaky, though, <laughs> though down here. Turns out we can get the ladder segments down. There's a vacuum in here, so they haven't melted. Maybe, maybe if we're sneaky here, we can sort of grab that and dump that in there like we did before. What? Uh, oh, Abyssalite's ending up in here. Yeah, that's the only place to dump off Abyssalite, so I think, uh, yeah, they're, they're taking Abyssalite from all over the map. Never mind, don't get too hot. If we do this right, no one should get too scalded. Just pop down, grab it, and get out. I've been advised that if their heads don't go underneath the magma, they're fine. That went really well, eh? Take the rest of it then, why not? Damn, okay, I was... I'm kind of surprised this is working as well. Oh, there's the scalding. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let them finish this off, and then we'll get them out of here. All right, only a few minor injuries. Okay, uh, maybe more than one or two. How, what do we got here? Uh, four of them got a little bit scorched. But I think what we can also do is, since we now have access to obsidian, we can maybe grab an obsidian tile and stick it in there. That will force the magma out, and maybe if we sort of work it out, we can force it all out of there. Oh, and we also want to sweep up that Wolframite. Oh yeah, who's getting scalded now? Come on, you're not even near the place. You'll be fine. Walk it off, walk it off, you'll be grand. Uh, once uh, once we get that Wolframite out of there, we'll squish all that metal in there. What? Oh, wow, yeah, our power reserves are going to go down if I don't start putting magma back in there again sometime soon. I did put them all back in there again, and then after they all went through, I completely forgot and haven't come back here, so... Yeah, we're through all of the side materials. All that's left now is... Ah, igneous rock. That was it. So, we'll float the igneous rock through. That should keep the temperature here nice and hot. Yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, that was my bad. I should have done that a while ago. I've been uh, doing some side projects and collecting an awful lot more regular. We're up to 624 tons. Uh, and I've also scraped out most of the things here. We've also got rid of all the water on this side. We have more space than we've ever had before. Now, I need to plan where we're going to put in this rocket. I probably also want to move this. That is... That is so many critters. Dear lord, that is so many critters. I'm not even sure how I can move them out of there. Um, the plan would be... Sort of have bunker tiles down here. Uh, would it be? Mm. Then we'd have to have insulated tiles on the opposite side because those bunker tiles will get hot and we don't want the heat leaking into our base. So then you have a second row down here. So this needs to move. Maybe I should chop it down to one tile, but if I do that, a whole lot of critters are going to fall off that. Mm. You really have to plan ahead very well when you're doing this. Okay, let me think for a second about how we're going to manage this. Yeah, I am totally out of time. Um, damn it, I, I, it feels like I just started. But I suppose we had to we had to move all the, the, Dre the Dreco ranches. We had to reinstall this section over here. We had to move all the bedrooms. We had to uh, get all the... The shovel's up to speed. We had to move around the hydrogen generators. We had to redo all of the magma down here. It's amazing how much goes into this map. It definitely is a bit of a brain teaser. It it makes you really double, triple, and quadruple think everything. You you're just you have to be ten steps ahead, or else you're uh, twenty steps behind. Yeah, does that make any sense? You know what? I don't care. My brain is already fried enough. But before we go, I'm going to get something done to get started on space. Otherwise, I'll just feel like I'm going crazy. You know what? We'll stick in a telescope here. That's what we'll do. We'll stick in a telescope. And we've got a lovely gift out of here. It's a ton of chlorine. Um, Liquid chlorine? Uh, or gas? I'm not sure. Let's, uh, let's print it and find out because, well, I don't really need the lead and the plastic. Well, we've got plenty of that already. 
What is this? Chlorine, a thousand kilos, unbreathable gas. Oh yeah, so it's a gas. We've we've got a ton of chlorine. Well, that would have been handy a long time ago, but it's fine. Better late than never. Oh, and uh, yeah, I've been having a problem here, and it's research. My research has stalled out, and I couldn't figure out how, why until I went to my research station, where it's telling me I have insufficient dirt. We've run out of dirt. <laughs> As in, all the dirt got either consumed by the mealwood or, well, eaten by science. Most of it, it seems to have gone to science. So we've literally run out of dirt to do the last of the tech tree. We're going to need more dirt, which means we need to actually build a compost. I can't remember the last time I built a compost. Uh, which means we're going to need to deal with very germy polluted dirt. How many germs is on this? There's a lot. There's a lot of germy polluted dirt, which means we're going to need to put in some sinks and... <laughs> oh, this map just keeps finding ways to hurt me. I I'm beginning to enjoy it. Right, we have two composts here to make ourselves dirt, a sink, which we will set direction left. Uh, so yeah, we will hopefully be able to start composting the dirt from those water sieves. That's <laughs> just so that we can do some science. That's kind of depressing. At the same time, anyone who does science, well, the whole science station is probably going to end up covered in germs. I set the germ, uh, the germ disinfect at quarter of a million germs. Should, most things should never, ever get that high. And where was it? Oh yes, telescope. We're not even trying for subtlety with this design. This is just a sheer brute force and ignorance. We're, we're going to just scan a bunch of planets, all the close by ones, preferably the, well, two, four, five, six, seven, the first seven planets. We, we won't be able to analyze any of these just yet, but soon, soon, just uh, first, we're going to put ourselves together a little uh, dumb airlock, I suppose is the best way to describe it. It's not going to be a very smart one, but it should theoretically work. We'll just grab ourselves some crude oil, dump it right here and see what happens. Oh, wait. Might want to wait until they finish that tile first. There we go. They dropped a little blob of crude oil. That's only a tiny amount. I don't know if that's going to stop people from breathing it out of the way, but I'm okay with that. Uh, oh my god, how did you get stuck in there? You muppet. You know what? You can stay out there. You can stay out there. It's fine. Nobody minds. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, we'll be able to dismantle that from outside. Now, if we've done this right, that little liquid blob there should act as a gas lock, so nothing can get in and out. Yes, everyone will get some wet feet, but all I want to do is make sure that someone can get in here to use the telescope, and that's it. And it's going to be, well, all manual. Last thing we need to do, though, is skill tree. Since we've got everyone on barbecue, this is now our stable morale level. So, uh... Yeah, I think Mando can go, they can grab super hard digging, there's a little bit of abyssalite left. Quill, you know what, you're good just the way you are. Uh, Baby Yoda, you can grab astronomy research, we're going to need that. I have no idea what I'm going to do with IG-11. We don't need any, we have literally no crops left. Uh, you are perfect just the way you are, you're just going to be our cook anyway. What is your cooking skill got up to at this point? Cooking is, cuisine is 12. Wow, I was expecting it to be slightly more to be honest. What was, was our plans for you, Grief? You know what? You can be mechatronics engineer. The more of those we have, the better. There's another mechatronics engineer and another mechatronics engineer and another mechatronics engineer. Always good to have those on sand. Now, let's uh, open the doors and have a look at the sky, shall we? Okay, so it's a little scaldy in there because of all the regolith. No, no, don't, don't go hop around for happiness in the middle of a scalding area. But on the bright side, most of the gases are escaping. Eventually there'll be no gases in there and that should hopefully solve the problem. Oh, did you? Wow, okay, that object got analyzed extremely quickly. Well, perfect. Okay, I think we'll call it a day at that. We've analyzed a planet. We've got a telescope up. We'll do the first seven planets and be done with it. Uh, research what? Who's scalding now? What are you doing? No, you can't get scalded. You're inside. Can you actually get scalded inside there? 17... Oh my god, you can't actually get scalded inside there. That's... No, you need to leave. That... Okay, maybe I need to do some minor changes there. That's... <laughs> I think I'll wait until that's more of a vacuum before we send anyone else back in. Yeah, that, that might be a better plan. <laughs> ah, this map is teaching me things I never thought I'd, I'd need to know. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed our little trip down the baby mini base and uh, good luck.